Breaking news tonight, Lexington police tell us two men are now in custody after an unusual incident at an elementary school. He was able to kick the guy and get away from him. A Lexington mother says a strange man grabbed her son as he walked to his bus stop. Why police arrested a Kentucky father as his young son was taking part in the state police shot with a trooper program. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good evening to you. Some tense moments at a Lexington Elementary School this afternoon. School leaders say two suspicious men tried to get past the school's office. This all began at Sandersville Elementary School. The men soon left the building, but police say their car later crashed into a garage at a home on nearby, nearby Movado Court. Garrett Weimer has the very latest on the investigation. Garrett's live with the breaking details. Garrett. Yeah, it's a scary afternoon for students and staff here at Sandersville Elementary, uh, but parents tell me they're thankful that staff and police did what they did and kept their kids safe. It started when two men showed up to the school and tried to get inside by saying they wanted to register for classes. Staff in the office wouldn't let them in inside, called police, and put the school on heightened alert. Now, we're told the men then tried to get in around the back, but couldn't because the doors were locked. Police say the two men took off and wouldn't stop when police tried to pull them over. Police say the men eventually crashed into the garage of a home a little over a mile away on Movado Court, then ran through the house. 19-year-old Jordan Rinder and 20-year-old Eric Scott were arrested around back. Back at the school, police say they found money inside a storm drain where they believed the two men dropped it before they left. Police praised staff at the school for the way they handled the situation. The school did an excellent job. Um, they, are, they train and prepare for this type of encounter, so they did exactly what we wanted them to do. Render and Scott are charged with burglary, fleeing and evading, and criminal mischief, all stemming from the incident at the home. They have not been charged for anything here at the school, but police do say they could file more charges against them. Live in Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. In an email to parents this afternoon, Sandersville Elementary School's principal said that security procedures at the school worked as they were supposed to. An alert tonight for students of a Lexington Middle School and their families. In the last day, one student says a strange man grabbed him, and another student says someone tried to lure him into a car. Both children are students at Jesse Clark Middle School. Today, Sean Moody talked to the mother of one of those students. It's our top story at 6. News of the first incident came in an email last night. You go back and forth very quickly from angry to terrified. Erin Bagwell had good reason to be afraid. She said a man tried to take her 11 year old son. She said he was walking to the bus stop near Southview and Lamont, and a red pickup truck was following him. And they stopped and they grabbed him by the ankle and shoved him to the ground and tried to get him in their truck. That's when she says his football skills kicked in. He was able to kick the guy and get away from him. He kicked, he punched, he ran. The school sent an email out to parents last night letting them know about that incident. Then just this afternoon, they sent a second email saying there had been another incident here in the Southview area. This time, they say a man in a car pulled up to a boy in his yard offering candy and a ride. The boy's parents told police that man was a neighbor, and school officials said police will step up patrols in the area. Bagwell said it's tough to find the balance between being open and being cautious. I worry about every one of them. Some of them are very overly friendly. You know, you don't want to teach them to be rude and standoffish, but also you have to find that line between too friendly and not friendly enough. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. In recent years, there have been other reports of students being approached by someone in a reddish color truck. Police haven't said if all of these cases are connected. Tonight, we're learning some new details about a shooting in Frankfurt that injured two college students. Police are investigating if it stemmed from a fight at an off-campus party. Police say that one of the people injured is a Kentucky State University student. The shooting happened outside a car wash not far from the KSU campus. Victor Puente has the latest. Frankfurt police were already in the area near Main and Allnut Streets when the shooting happened. 
uh, and they were investigating a stolen vehicle when they heard several gunshots being fired. They say a Kentucky State University student had pulled into the parking lot of Rose's car wash when a dark sedan pulled in beside them. They thought they knew who was in that vehicle, that it was somebody that was a friend of theirs. It turned out not to be in the person opened fire on them. 20-year-old Catrice Plowcha, a KSU student, was hit in the arm. 24-year-old Dante Berry was hit in the abdomen. Barry attends Central State University in Ohio. Frankfurt police say it's possible the string of events that led to that shooting started at a party earlier that night, a few miles away from campus at the American Legion on Versailles Road. There had been some type of altercation there, and so this shooting occurred after that. Warfel says the victims had no idea who the shooter was, so they're hoping someone in the area or at that party can give them more information. Even if it's something that occurred earlier in the evening at this uh, at this party, this all where this altercation happened, you know they may brush it off, think it's not important, and it may be very important to this case. In Frankfurt, Victor Puente, WKYT. A Kentucky State University spokesperson says they have started their own investigation into the shooting. New tonight, the Fayette County Sheriff's Office says a wanted man is now in custody. Deputies arrested 27-year-old Deverick Fields yesterday along Courtney Avenue near Liberty Road. They say they were serving an EPO and felony warrants at the time. Fields has been charged with burglary, fleeing and evading police, resisting arrest, criminal mischief and assault on a police officer. We have an update tonight on some thefts from cars in two Lexington neighborhoods. Lexington police say they're working with the man who shared this surveillance video that shows thieves going through unlocked cars. And they say they've received several tips since we aired that video yesterday. But so far, police have not made any arrests. The victims say the thieves stole Christmas gifts and other items from unlocked cars in the South Point and Pinnacle neighborhoods. It's an annual state police program that helps children all across this state during the holiday season. This week, state police posts are taking part in the Shop with a Trooper program. But police say a father tried to steal items from the Moorhead Walmart while his child was shopping with state troopers in the store. Caitlin Sentner has the story new at 6. Shop with a Trooper is a time for state police to give back to the community. It's also a good chance for us to, to interact with kids who probably have been uh, seen law enforcement uh, in a negative light and it's an opportunity for the kids to, to realize that you know that, that, that we are ordinary people as well. But troopers are stunned today after a father brought his son to the Moorhead Walmart on Monday for shop with the trooper and left in handcuffs. Police tell us before dad made it out these doors, Walmart's loss prevention team caught him with a drill we're told didn't cost more than $40. Police say trying to steal a drill probably similar to this one landed the man in Rowan County Jail this holiday season. His identity we're choosing not to reveal for the safety of his children. Well, honestly, we were we were very, uh, very appalled by, by what happened. We were extremely disappointed with what happened. This is something Master Trooper Joe Wienemann hasn't seen before. The arrest report is written in all caps with 40 exclamation points saying the man did this in front of the children and multiple state police. We were able to, to continue to uh, keep it positive to where we were still able to continue to um, do, every, do all the interactions that we were doing with the kids as far as the shopping was concerned. In Moorhead, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. And the arrest is not stopping the shop with a trooper program. More children will go shopping tomorrow. Rain is moving across parts of the bluegrass tonight, and it's also bringing an end to the recent mild weather we've seen. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey shows us what he's tracking for us on the First Alert Defender. Yes, indeed. We are noticing the rain train slowly beginning to load up now, and it's going to uh, deposit some decent amounts into parts of central and eastern Kentucky overnight and early tomorrow. Those temperatures right now, 60 degrees or better still across many areas of central and eastern Kentucky. 60 Lexington and Frankfurt, we were flirting with 70 again today into parts of southeastern Kentucky. What we're noticing, though, on our Defender Radar Network, some light and I mean light sprinkles that are out there. A lot of this stuff, as you heard me talk about a little bit ago, not reaching the ground. 
We will have to wait until later this evening and tonight before we honestly pick up on some of those uh, raindrops that will begin to increase as we have a storm system that is off to the northwest of us. Now, what that's going to do, it's going to unlock some colder air coming in behind it. But draw your attention to that little batch of rain around Memphis, Tennessee. It is aimed toward central and eastern Kentucky. That's what arrives overnight and into tomorrow with gusty showers moving in. Then we turn colder, some snowflakes possible with a busy Christmas week forecast, at least first half of that Christmas week forecast, guys, but I could back here in just a matter of a few minutes. Chris, thank you. We were all pulling for him. He won the voice last night, and now people in Harlan County are planning a big celebration to welcome Jordan Smith home. Jordan Smith posted this picture on Instagram today, posing with his voice trophy. It included the caption, Good morning, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Smith was named the winner of the NBC singing competition last night. Hundreds of people gathered in Harlan County last night for a watch party, and they cheered when Jordan won. The county's judge executive says it's also a victory for anyone from the mountains who has a dream. My little boy runs up and is crying his eyes out. I thought he was hurt, and he says, No, I'm just so happy for Jordan. Jordan Smith will return home this weekend. Monday afternoon at 2.30, he'll be honored with a parade through the streets of downtown Harlan. That will be followed by a celebration program at 4 at the Harlan Center. If you have not heard him sing, you owe it to yourself yes. because he has got just a beautiful voice. Absolutely. Well, some UK students call her a second mother while they're on campus. Next, how they surprise a food services worker with a very special Christmas gift. And then how seeing Santa Claus will help you save some money if you're riding a Lextran bus later this week.